Hello and welcome to ESPN Quick and Post video cast. My guest today is Rahul Dravid. Need I say anything more? Rahul, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Yeah, just before you know, I mean, obviously, I followed your career very closely. Uh, your career started off uh, in my room, my uh, room partner, your test career, 1996. But then, you know, before doing a show like this, you do a little bit of research. So when you Rahul look back at your career and you see 164 test matches. 344 one day one t20 international that i want to like there are couple of consecutive sixes also if i remember 500 matches for india wow incredible so do you look back and say wow that's brilliant i i don't look back too much uh, i must admit i kind of sometimes uh, now uh, you know, sometimes i feel like i almost don't think of myself as a cricket player anymore I think in in a, in a lot of ways I, i think i'm really happy about the fact that uh, you know look i got the best out of my potential you know i, I definitely think that uh, obviously a big dream for me to want to play for india um, never really imagined i would be able to play as much as i eventually ended up playing uh, so uh, so yeah it was great it was great when it when it lasted i had some great experiences some great memories when you started off as a player eventually i Would it be fair to call you a, a batsman who was uh, whose strength was um, not defence but a defensive player? Would that be a fair assessment, or you feel a little uh, under uh, okay. undermined? Yeah, I took, a lot, I took a lot of time to score runs. There's no doubt about it. I played a lot of balls. And, <laughs> yeah, so I played a forty-two. Yeah, I would have, I would have liked to have played a little bit quicker. I think I think all of us would have liked to in a lot of ways. But but I think yeah, I think it would be a fair assessment and. Um, in in the sense that uh, i kind of figured out what was my best way of scoring runs or contributing to the team or making an impact in a game or or, or making a winning contribution in a game and and if, and if that meant occupying the crease for a long period of time or that meant tiring the bowlers out, out or that meant concentrating uh, that meant blunting out the new ball or difficult conditions so that things got easier later on then I saw that as my job, and I took great pride in it. And I tried to then do that at the best that I possibly could. Would I have liked to bat like Virendra Seva? I would have loved to have batted like Virendra Seva. I would love to have hit his shots, but maybe I didn't have that kind of range, or I didn't have that kind of talent that Virendra had. So I had to make the best, do the best with what I had. And I mean, talent in terms of stroke play. Maybe my talents were different. My talents were um, determination or concentration. Um, I got the best out of that, and I tried to sort of work on those strengths and. And I'd like to believe that I became a little bit more of an attacking batsman or a more aggressive batsman. The fact that I played 300 sort of one-day games, obviously in a different era. I mean, I think the way I batted in that era, I wouldn't have survived at all in this era. I mean, just look at the strike rates today. Look at the way people bat today. Uh, I think I would have had to adapt to another level, or you know, I, I believe I might have. You know, I think yeah, one of the things, while my strike rates even in one-day cricket weren't up to the level of say a Tendulkar or a Sehwag, uh, you know, they they did. The, For a team in the era that that we played in, you know, I think that's that's why the only way you can judge yourself. And I can't compare myself to Kohli today or or Rohit yeah. Sharma today because yeah. I mean the, they've just blown the whole uh, the one day paradigm to a different level. I mean, it's uh, yeah. today 300, 350 seems like these guys are chasing it for fun. You know, yeah. I, in our time, yeah. 250 was you would struggle to get 250. So so it's a different era, and I, I think I coped quite well with that. So I did model my game and try and improve and get better at it. Uh, but to be fair, I grew up wanting to be a test cricketer. You know, I I wanted yeah. to be a test cricketer. That's yeah. So that was that was actually part. my question. The reason I asked you that is, do you remember a time when you sort of you started playing cricket? Obviously, because I'm using myself as an example. I wanted to be like a Sunil Gavaskar, so I was very proud of having a defensive game, wanted that technique and all that. Did your game uh, sort of evolve in a way that you then became? A player of a certain kind, or you set out to become, as you said, a test batsman with the best defence in the world. A batsman hard to dislodge. So I let's be honest. I I also wanted to be a Sunil Gavaskar, me like or a or a G R Vishwanath. You know, they were my sort of heroes. And then you know, watching the, the likes of you bat in in sort of nineteen uh, in that period, nineteen eighty eight, nineteen ninety. Uh, you know, in, in Pakistan and against England and stuff, and sort of it felt like it was a transition from a Gavaskar and a Mandrekar, and and I sort of looked up to those kind of batsmen, uh, and it was, uh, and and maybe partly because I didn't feel I had the range of shots like a Tendulkar. I'm watching Tendulkar hit those shots. Maybe I just felt look, I didn't have the power or the strength to be able to do that. So 
what could I model myself on and whether it was a Manjrekar at that point of time or whether it was a Gavaskar before that you know that's what you kind of model yourself on uh, and and then as time went on I mean after the 1996 World Cup you started realizing that one day cricket was going to be a huge part of the game I mean I remember we went on our first trip in 1996 we didn't pick separate teams they picked one team it was really a team picked for the yes so and it's and we played three one day games and and I mean I'm not I wouldn't call them warm up games but the level of everyone was focused on how are we going to do the tests and you know preparation for the test matches and the one days just happened to be there and we kind of played it and we lost the first two so that's why Ganguly and me got a chance in the last one in Old Trafford so it was that kind of you know the one day cricket was treated a little bit like that but I yeah. could see that it was changing and. And more and more one day cricket was being played, you know, there were tournaments in Sharjah, there were tournaments all over the world and I quickly realised that I did not want to be someone who was just in the team for short periods of time. You know, you would be, you could, you, ra you ran the risk in that stage and people started talking about different teams at that stage and, and you ran the risk of being someone who only played one format of the game and that's something I didn't want, uh, you know, for myself. I really wanted to get better so I worked on it and, and you know, I had, like I said, I got dropped and and I think you know I learned from it and, and, and maybe rightly got dropped at that stage and, and improved and got better and played sort of all forms of the game for a while. Okay, interesting. Uh, Rahul, uh, so let's talk about defensive batting because that is a real topic of this chat. Uh, increasingly becoming irrelevant you think in today's cricket uh, with the way you know sport is uh, evolving? I don't think it's becoming irrelevant. Um, Maybe the value of it is not as uh, as important as it probably was a, a generation ago. You know, I, I don't think defensive batting can ever become irrelevant. You still need to be able to defend your wicket, even be able to score runs. And everyone wants to score a lot of runs. And, and I think you still need to be able to defend your wicket uh, to be able to score runs. So it's not becoming irrelevant. But but what I will say is that you can survive without it. You know, I think you can still survive today and have a pretty decent and successful uh, career without actually having a very strong defensive technique because you could choose to play T20 cricket and you can play one-day cricket and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, make have a very successful career. You don't really need to be a test cricketer. Whereas a generation ago, you probably needed to be a test cricketer to make a living of the game. And, and look at the best, you know, players in the world today. Uh, a, a lot of them do have good defensive technique, whether it's a Coley or Williamson or even a Smith. I mean, they score quicker than other test players play, but they still can play out difficult periods of the game. And so, I think a defensive technique for me is 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 a is how do you get is your ability to play out the difficult periods in a game, whether it's a seaming track or whether it's a turning wicket or whether it's a you know a really quick wicket. How do you get yourself out of trouble in those in that period? You know, how do you how do you sort of survive that period to be able to cash in later on? And the very best players of Test cricket, you know, will be able to do that and have to be able to do that. Now, you know, the scenario has changed where there are tremendous incentives on all fronts, and I'm not just talking about financial incentives, but for a cricketer to become popular, there's a bigger stage, more people watch you play white ball cricket. So do you see a tendency of young players not willing to try too hard to develop the test? Uh, match games, so to say, like it's a bit like a classic singer uh, or a singer aspiring to become famous and you know well off in life. Why go through that hard grind of classical singing when it's not being as appreciated as it was? Say maybe in the 80s it was, but now clearly, you know, there are some big brands, popular cricketers doing really well around the world, but not Test cricket and thereby don't need a defensive uh, game. So do you see that tendency now in? players coming to the land. So, I would say that that in my interaction with a lot of the young cricketers now and I work with the under 19 in India A and all that through the NCA system, they, everyone kind of starts off, so all of their heroes is a Virat Kohli or a Kane Williamson or a Stephen Smith or an AP De Villiers who have succeeded in all formats of the game. So, I think everyone wants to be that. I mean, if you yeah. were to give someone a wish and say, what do you want to do? You say, I would love to play all the formats of the game. I want to be I want to be Virat Kohli, I want to be playing all the time, I want to be playing cricket. So, I think they all start off like that and everyone wants to do that. But there comes a point when I think that sometimes um, some of the guys can get a bit realistic about their own careers. 
and then sometimes you know when you have a limited amount of time to prepare and you have so many formats to game uh, some of the less talented or less skillful players can can start recognizing that maybe they can look at the indian team and realize you know, how am i going to break into this team with uh, with with kohli and, and pujara and rahane there or you know this is very difficult but if i really practice my white ball cricket then i you know can definitely get into one of the ipl team opportunity to make a career of myself and that can that can creep in a lot earlier than it did in an earlier generation the superstars of the game are going to want to play all formats of the game i, I don't see but that, that that number you would say would be shrinking every uh, decade of people wanting yes. to be all three formats so i'm just going to ask you this wasn't part of the discussion but say 25 30 years, years later where do you see test championship being uh, you know at which level and how many kids would be really aspiring to be test back so i i would like i mean i know everyone says that test batsmanship has gone down and stuff but i actually have i actually believe that it's test batsmanship is a lot more exciting it's a lot more positive now than it's ever been before in this scoring at a quicker rate and you know so uh, so test batsmanship is not only defensive batsmanship it's got to be defensive it's aggressive it's you know different kinds of batsmanship so the aggressive element of test batsmanship is is welcome it's it's really uh, you know going forward we want to see the run score so people are playing more shots even in test cricket which is which is fantastic you know i think the great one of the great things for india is that virat kohli values test cricket so much absolutely I mean, he's always, yeah and he's always talking about it and i've had a couple of conversations with him and you know I, he's he's always talking about how do we do well in test cricket now you know i think he understands that the his, the real respect for him as a cricketer is going to come from his success in test cricket and i think that's a great role model for a lot of our young young cricketers to follow so you know i would really like to see that we can keep getting challenging they they they're challenging as as challenging as they can be there's a good balance between bat and ball um and i think people will get excited by seeing that i mean i think if mm. we just flatten out wicket and make it another place where people keep hitting shots in test cricket as well then i mean what's the difference and i think that might get yeah. boring as well uh i'm very interested in young players that come under your wing now when say there's a series that you're playing which is a, a long format uh, series uh, So, what's the specific area that you need to work on as coaches? Do they have a natural ability to leave balls out at the off stump, to play close to the body and stuff like that? You know, which is uh, which are sort of the basics and foundations of uh, batting in the longer format. So, um, so, so yeah, I think I think these these kind of skills are are, are learned skills and they're acquired skills, and you've got to practice them a lot. I think one of the challenges that young players Face today is that they just don't have, I think, the length of time to be able to practice uh, a lot of these skills. So they grow up, you know. I think they grow up playing um, all the three formats of the game. A, a lot of junior cricket is now also even even like, uh, you know, even when you go down to the age of 13, 14, 15, kids are playing. A lot of the local domestic cricket, which used to be in the past uh, one-day games at least, or even two-day, three-day games, have all become. 2020 games as more 2020 tournaments even as young kids you know I see young boys and girls today playing so much of 2020 cricket at the age of 12 13 14 which was never the case so i think to practice some of these skills for the long form game uh, sometimes you find i find that they just don't have enough time you know because they're moving from one format of the game to the other and they're just playing different formats of the game so unless you're actually you know so, so even if you look at the indian team unless you're sort of specialized in one format of the game like say Uh, well, like, I don't think he specialises. Like, yeah. You know, like he just that, but he's only being picked in one format of the game, which is Pujara. Yeah. Right? He's only picked in one format. Yeah. Um, so, so he's got the time to be able to practice this. You know, I think he's he's obviously in between tours, or he goes and plays a lot of Ranji Trophy games. He's played county cricket. He's probably the only one in the Indian team who's not sort of you know jumping from format to format. So, for example, if we take the New Zealand trip, uh, a lot of the boys who were on the trip played uh, you know the one day games. They played the T20 games and they came straight to the Test match with you know probably one practice game or three or four days of practice. And and that's uh, you know that's not easy. And I think that's where the the challenge really lies for all of us is how do we how do we sort of find that balance? So maybe the future of batting. would be said that any young kid would want to play all three formats and then realizes you know which is the one that is more suited to and then picks his you know uh, format of choice and continues because you've got to excel right you can't be a mediocre back in all three formats absolutely you want to excel in at least one of the 
three formats of the game. Um, guys like Virat have shown that you can do it. Uh, it's not easy and it takes a special Sorry. ability to be able to do that. Uh, but I think one of the things to learn from Virat is just the intensity that he brings to practice and what he's and he's able to challenge himself. So I think that's a that's a really good learning and something I talk to a lot of our boys about is just to watch, you know, the intensity that he's bringing to his practice session. So, you know, if, if you were to sort of, you know, hear stories or, or, or watch him practice, you know, he doesn't hold back in practice. One of the things I find is that a lot of players, they, so, so for example, if you go to a net and you don't want to play the bouncers, you know, a lot of people will say, no, no, don't bowl short and just pitch it up. I'm looking to, I want to get a feel. You know, it's a very famous word. I, I'm just looking to get a feel, you know, two days before a game, I'm just looking to get a feel. And, and what gives him the feel is half volleys. You know, they, they want to practice half volleys and drives and cover drives when, you know, what they're going to face is bouncers and intensity. So, can you bring that intensity to be practiced? Can you be comfortable in that intensity? You know, I think it's very, very important because that's the, that's the intensity that you're going to need to survive a difficult spell or to survive um, you know, a tough spell of fast bowling or spin bowling in a test match. You're going to need that level of uh, intensity. You've got to bring that into practice. And, uh, and that's not easy to do. And I think that's something that Virat does really well. And I would assume that you know, having, having watched Steven Smith as well uh, you know, at Rajasthan a little bit, sure. he's a tremendous practice uh, work ethic. And, 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 and it's not about time spent. So I think people make that mistake about you know, time spent at practice. You'll have guys spending long hours at practice. Oh, I spent so much time. But you realize that it's all soft practice. It's not, it's, there's, not, there's no intensity to that practice. That's a nice so not, term, like soft practice. Yeah, it's not challenging in practice. You know, it's not. They don't. You don't walk out of that. You know, you gotta feel a bit nervous when you bat. You know, I was always think. I was like, I mean, I think I would always tell guys like Sri and Venki and stuff. You know, I was lucky that you know, I was growing up in, in Bangalore. I got to play these guys in the nets a lot, and uh, I would always tell them to bowl bounces at me whenever they felt like it. You know, because or, or, or make it. You gotta make it tough for yourself because that's how it is. And if you do that for a short period of time, I think that's more valuable than. You know, some easy kind of practice for hours and hours, which you know, knocking and throwdowns, and I mean, you know, you see people doing knocking for hours and hours. They'll be getting somebody doing half volley and you know, knocking chandra heads. I mean, I've got its value. Don't don't get me wrong, but it's not. Uh, it's that not helping you become. A, it's not helping you become a better defensive batsman, or it's not helping you become a better test batsman. I'm just wondering, good test batsman, it's hard grind. But what about an, an excellent T20 player? Uh, how how would you rate those two skills? Do you think those skills are also hard to achieve? You know the game changer that I'm talking about, the gift of power. You know, T20 cricket, IPL as well. You know, it's a matter of four or five balls, and you have got to soak in the pressure and go say 15 runs. So those kind of skills versus test match batting skills. How how do you compare those? Uh, I mean, you have to value some of the things that these T20 guys do, and especially someone like me really values it because I couldn't. Yeah, you know, that's I, I where the question has come because I, that's another I, excellence of batting, isn't it? It's the other excellence yeah. of a. Yeah. I mean, look at and Andre Russell and the kind of sixes he's able to yeah. create. I know he's a strong man and everything, but you know, still, it's not just. It's not you can't take any strong man and put him there and yeah, expect exactly. him to. Yeah, So there's a there's a skill element. There is an element to that. So there's no doubt about it. I think it's, it's, the T20 game, the skill, the power, some of the shots these guys are playing um, is, is, is not easy and it requires, uh, it requires a, a certain level of skill and ability. So, no question about that. The only thing I would say in T20 cricket is that compared to Test cricket is that you could get away with a lot more. I mean, if you, you know, there's not much you can get away with. If you have glaring weaknesses in, in, in Test You're cricket, you can't survive. You, you can't survive. It's, it's, it's very difficult to survive or, or be very successful. I mean, you can still survive and manage, but you'll not be that successful. In T20 cricket, you know, the, the nature of the game is such in the way you can have a specific role and be very good at that role and, and be very successful. So, even you don't, you, you might not never need to come into bat in the first 14 overs, but you, may, you might be the best at capitalizing the last six and your value is, we know that's probably the most, you know, valuable skill you have. But you can, I think you can get away with stuff in, in T20 and to some extent in one-day cricket that you just can't get away in this cricket. What about emotions? Uh, because I want to talk about T20 batting um, because I'm talking more to a batsman. I mean, T20 player. We don't often talk about the emotions of a T20 bat batsman or a player. You know, because there is a lot at stake. You know, playing for an owner is slightly different from playing for India and crowd pressure and he comes in is bowling the final over you know to win the title or he's got to go in and get say 
uh, 13 runs in the last over and he's supposed to do that what about those emotions do you think these guys are built differently to take to take that on and it's something that you can say is very hard whereas in test cricket you get some time to settle yourself in you could have maybe a first bad spell like mohammed shami star of the study had you know two or three quiet spells before he fired in the last spell and got four or five wickets you don't have that kind of time so how do you rate the handling of emotions the anxiety the tension because all has, so that has to be done has to be done in a very short span of time so if you were to if you were to talk about the stress levels or the pressure in say just that particular moment then potentially you'd say yes in the t20 game like you mentioned the scenarios that we that you mentioned there is a huge amount of pressure the ability to go in straight away without um, you know without getting your eye in and having to hit two sixes you know i think that's incredible pressure or to be able to do what talos that way did in the in the final yeah. of the of, of the sort of team world cup or on the other mm-hmm. flip side of of ben stokes to be able to defend that you know i i yeah. think that's that's a huge yeah. amount of pressure in the moment so yes i mean i think that's that's not not easy and i think that requires again practice and the guys who do it more and more and put themselves in those positions more and more uh, get better at doing it it's a simple thing it's not it's not like it's like anything else i mean the more you do it the better you should get if you learn it from it if you you want to make a mistake does, it, does but, nature come into play uh, certain kind of nature makes people to put yeah, yeah definitely i think you know i think the, the skill and, and maybe whether it is nature or they have practiced it or they have learned how to do it or definitely the ability to do something that you care deeply about or something where the consequences are great if you can play that with the mindset that i don't care about it or i don't care about the consequences of what happens i mean when you watch mahendra singh dhoni play at the back end of a game or at his best when he was at his best you always got the feeling that hey he's doing something really important but he's playing it like the result does not really matter to him you know not an easy set to get yeah, into that so uh, yeah. either you need to have that uh, or you need to train it you know and i think it's something that you know after it's a skill that i potentially never had you know i mean when it mattered to me deeply it mattered to me the consequences you know but um, but but i don't know i mean it be really interesting to ask mind sing doni whether this is come something that's come naturally to him or something that he's you know potentially worked on and uh, and if he has the answer to what the what the you know what, what the mantra to that is then you know uh, we should be marketing that but uh, yeah. but no i think that's what great finishers and great players at the back end or, or guys who can bowl at the death they're able to do you know they're able to get themselves into that frame of mind but if you were talking pressure as a whole the fact of going through 5 days of a test match i think that is unbelievable pressure i don't think there's any pressure like that because mm. there's no running away from it you know i think in a one day game or a t20 game you can have a bad day but and you walk off you pack your bags and you go to the next venue or you move on you have something new to look forward to but in a test match you know you get out in the first morning you're, you're a batsman you get out second over of the day you watch your team bat then you watch the opposition bat you spend the whole evening thinking about how badly i batted in the first inning but i've got a critical second innings to play coming on a difficult when the wicket is bearing and and you know to save a test match or, or whatever it is the fourth innings or the third innings and you have all this time to think so you have a lot of time to think in test match cricket so i i mean i personally i can't answer for other people but i found test cricket far more draining than any one day or any t20 cricket that i played okay let's get into mental reserve now i made some notes about the packages of uh, exceptional brilliance that you had in your test study i mean you were consistent right through started with which two scores just under 100 in your first two inning but 2002 uh, you know when you got the 400 on the trot two in england and then one in mumbai you just made some calculations one inning was 5 hours 38 minutes the other 7 hours 9 minutes 10 hours 29 minutes 5 hours 45 minutes so during those 400 which came back to back that is for a total of 28 hours then 2011 you know the uh, the series where only you got runs you batted for a total of 17 hours to get your 300 for a man like you who thinks invests a lot we are just a lot of investment in every inning how do you manage that you know 28 hours of batting i know there are little breaks in between but still it's, it's almost uh, not possible for a human being So uh, you know, I think that's one of the things I got better at. Um, and Sanjay, I think you probably you, you knew me as a as a young cricketer growing up and stuff. You knew that 
level of intensity that I had and that, that you know and I think in the early part of my career I probably didn't know how to manage that well enough and I think over the years I kind of learned how to manage it so around that period in say 2000 and especially after playing county cricket and spending six months in playing a season of county cricket and having to learn how to manage your energy because it was a lot of cricket uh, over that period of time and you had to keep playing all the time uh, sort of got better at managing my energy and my intensity I'm still always going to be uh, a slightly more sort of intense or a introverted kind of person uh, and you were aware of all this your nature and what you were made of you were aware yeah, of yeah yeah i was aware and I, and i sort of started figuring out over a period of time i sort of read some stuff and 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 listen to some people and i kind of realized that there's a line between having that that intensity and yes it is a benefit and an advantage to have that kind of intensity that determination but there's a point where it starts becoming detrimental to your ability to perform because it drains you emotionally and i think around that period of time was actually when i sort of figured out that uh you know I, i needed to be able to switch off i needed to be able to be interested in other things uh, and i think that's where a little bit when people say that i'm interested in a lot of other things outside of cricket uh, a lot of that actually came from actually making a bit of a conscious effort to do that because i wanted to switch off from the game and and, and you know take and conserve a lot of that emotional and mental energy and i saw around that period so it all sort of came together the fact that i had that bit of experience of playing international cricket <coughs> i think around that period 2000 I had a really good run say from around 2000 2001 to about 2007 and 8 uh, and I think that was around the period of time when I kind of figured out um, my life a lot better off the field I mean I think on the field was always going to be the same but but off the field so, I think uh, uh, sorry to interrupt so on the field was not that much of an issue for you on the field spending all those hours against high quality bowling that was something that not really here but Yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. I love doing that. I love batting. I I love competing. Okay. I love being in the contest. I I love that. So I really enjoyed that. But uh but the fact that I you know learned how to manage myself off the field a bit better. Um you know and I got a bit physically fitter as well. Uh, you know I think the advent of uh, uh, you know physical fitness trainers with the team physiotherapist with the team no doubt had a, had an impact on that because you know my fitness regime changed uh, my ability to manage my nutrition was better over that period so i think a lot of these little little things contributed to that ability to be able to play uh, these long innings and play over a long period of time so it's not necessarily one thing but i think it's a combination of these things final question is about cheteshwar pujara you know he is the hallmark today of a defensive player uh, when i make comparison with you obviously you know his technique is not as good as you i i think your technique is better you don't have to say that i'm saying it the other thing that people don't realize with rahul dravid was that he ran really well between wickets and that is something that i noticed about you that you were a defensive player but you were always looking for an opportunity to get ones and twos and that is something that i think became better and better as you played now pujara doesn't have these two gifts as much but it's just amazing what he does with what he has Three hundreds in Australia. This is a guy who will take fifty-five balls to get off the mark, and then go on to get a big hundred. So just help us understand Pujara, the batsman. I mean, coming from you, your observation, what you think, you know, drives him and makes him special would be nice. One day, hopefully, I'll have a chat with him and talk about you know how he approaches. But your assessment of Pujara? He's sort of he's sort of grown up. to play like that i think a little bit of his sort of the way he's been brought up by his father who was a sort of first coach and you know brought up to bat for long periods of time he always mentions this that sort of coming from a place like saurashtra or coming from a place like rajkot uh, i think it was drilled into him at a very young age that he needed to do much more than to sort of other people from bigger cities so they from a bombay or a bangalore or a, you know karnataka or teams that play in the sort of in those days i mean rajasthan has done really well over the last 4 or 5 years but but before that you know saurashtra would probably not be playing in these big mm. uh, semi finals and finals of the ranji trophy and so he had to make every innings count you know and i think even in junior cricket i think he has that mindset that every innings needs to count and that's the way he's built his batting you know and i think he does have a, a, a good technique that, that which is you know he's got a good solid defensive technique he's got a range of shots that he knows he's probably not got as big a range of shots as 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 say you know uh, some of the other guys in the team but i think he knows what he's strong at uh, he's exceptional against spin so i mean i think one of the things is he's i mean one of the things you'll notice about pujara is even if he starts slow 
once the spinners come on i think he's he's better than even a lot of the guys i played with or even me when it comes to taking on spinners and it's, i don't mean by hitting sixes but his ability to rotate strike against spinners or to use his feet i mean we saw that against nathan lyon i think he drove nathan lyon nuts by you know stepping out nearly every single ball and that's you know, this is a world class bowler who's a, a, at the top of his game at the moment and you know pujara just made it so easy by stepping out to him all the time i, I, mean, I haven't seen many people do that even though they're more attacking batsmen you may call them attacking batsmen but you know that so i think he's really worked out his game uh, phenomenally well uh, and then just those hours and those powers of concentration and i think just that ability to concentrate uh, i think he knows he's he, he's playing only one format of the game and he's got to make i think every test match count uh, so so i think that kind of you know uh, maybe pushes him and, and and makes him work all that much harder so yeah i think he's uh, he's probably the last, the last of a In, in some ways, a breed. Really, I, I'm not really sure you're going to see too many of those kind of players uh, coming through uh, because they're not going to be taught or coached that way. You know, no, I don't think any parent or any coach is now going to teach um, someone from the age of eight or nine or ten uh, like uh, you know Pujara's father taught him that value your wicket. Like we were taught. I mean, I, exactly like how we were taught. I mean, Mr. Tarapur in those days, if I hit the ball in the air, he would get upset. You know, hit everything straight. Hit it in the V. So I don't think kid. I don't think we're teaching children like that. So he's probably yeah. the last of the generation. I don't think you're going to see anyone like him after that because we're not teaching them like that anymore. Yeah, just imagine. You know, I mean, at least the era before this was easier for defensive players. I mean, the Atish or Pujara is playing in this era and still making a name for himself, playing one format, playing under a captain who, until the Australian series, I thought from the outside was all for attacking cricket, loved attacking batsmen. And if Pujara has achieved something really significant, I think he has let Virat Kohli know that defensive batsmanship can also win you games and a series like the one in Australia. And somewhere I think from the outside, the penny has dropped Virat Kohli that there is place for a uh, defensive batsman like Pujara to win, you know, significant was, series. Yeah, yeah, like it's always going to be place for him like, for a person like that. I think. You know, teams are also realizing that they need to prepare. They, they. I mean, teams when you travel abroad or when you, you know, you know that teams are going to prepare tracks that are going to be challenging for you because they know they can't play you on a flat track. So all the more value for someone like a Pujara or a defensive batsman. So having someone like that in your lineup is actually gold dust. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, in, in in today's day and age, when we talk about teams sometimes playing with, I think one of the great things that. You know, I think where we were able to beat Australia was they they played with four four bowlers. They played with three fast bowlers and one spinner. And, and the longer Pujara batted, the longer he kept them on the ground. The harder it was going to become for them to be able to you know take wickets as the series went on. So if you look at a series as not just one game as a whole, and over three matches, four matches, and we're talking about five match series now, then having someone like that who can occupy the crease might not. You might feel at one stage in a particular Test match, you know, it's 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 holding us back or. You know, it's not attacking enough. But if you look at it in, in as as a context of the whole series, then the role that someone like that is playing in the early part of the series could pay huge dividends when bowlers get tired at the back end of the series. You know, when and then it's you, you can cash in and then you can sort of win Test matches. So I don't think you can you should look at players like that as what they do in a session, but see them as a part of your team and and the whole of what you're doing. And, in the end the proof of the pudding is in the runs and in the winning of test matches and pujara has contributed to that i mean i can think of so many test matches where he's played you know match winning contributions and that's what you want I and mean, that's what virat kohli wants and, and i think that's what the indian cricket wants uh, rahul thank you so much for your time it was brilliant uh, we covered all aspects so just to finish off rahul dravid a uh, 500 in matches for india including that one t20 last uh, t20 international a truly great batsman and a highly underrated wicket keeper i would say <laughs> thanks thank you thanks so much, much. Yes, thanks sanjeev thank you